Welcome back to the Cloth Diaper Podcast. This is show 75 with David from Le Petit Ours or LPO Diapers. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is a somewhat regular show dedicated to sharing stories of cloth diapering from parents, brands, retailers, and more around the world. I'm your host, Bailey. I'm a cloth diaper mom, author, podcaster. This is kind of just what I'm doing these days is sharing podcasts. We just celebrated three years of the Cloth Diaper Podcast, and I am so excited to continue to bring you some great content and some great new speakers with some great new things. I feel like I just said great a whole lot is fair enough. So today's episode is with David from Le Petit Ours. And I filmed this or not filmed, but I recorded this in May with David. And I've also done a review on the LPO pocket and all-in-one diapers that are available in the U.S. You can find those on my blog, www.simplymombailey.com. I put all of my cloth diaper reviews on my Simply Mom Bailey website just because they're my opinion, my personal opinion, and I kind of, I like to keep the cloth diaper podcast as like a community space and then my thoughts and opinions over at Simply Mom Bailey. These reviews were sponsored and LPO was also able to provide some advertising funding for today's show. So today's show is with LPO, Le Petit Ours, and brought to you by Le Petit Ours. I'm really grateful and forever thankful for the brands who can and do find ways to support me, whether it's in whatever creative way. So if you're curious about Le Petit Ours and you're living in the United States, you need to go to lepetitoursusa.com. That's where you can find their exclusive United States production lineup. And if you happen to be located in Canada, you can visit lepetitours.ca. LPO diapers are also available at Le Goon Baby and several other retailers. So don't like you can check in with your retailer as well. But now I've been rambling for what is apparently a full two minutes and we are going to move on. I'm going to introduce David and we'll listen to what's going on with this brand and their ambitions in the coming year. But a lot of my listeners are international, got about 60% US. 20% 20% in Australia and the UK. Oh, Somebody cool. who hasn't heard of La Pete. Le, yeah. Le Petit Ours. <laughs> where That's like the where first does your thing. story begin? How do we pronounce it? Where does you, you go. get into cloth diapering? It's so funny. You, you know, we we currently, we have a warehouse in, U, in the UK and we're, we're servicing the US and it's so funny. I'm talking to so many people these days and they just massacre this game. <laughs> uh, and you know, we, we actually thought of going like the whole LPO cloth diaper route and rebranding, uh, but really we're, we're going to stay true to who we are and we're a Quebec-based company and we love what we do. So um, nine years ago, uh, when when my our, our first was uh, well not born yet, he was he was in my wife's tummy. Uh, we started looking for all sorts of solutions, and you know how it goes. You know how parents are. We were doing baby shows, and and then our friends were having babies, and of course cloth diapers came out, and we weren't sure at first like what it was. So of course you get informed. You you, you do what people do with our business now, but you kind of see who's there and what's going on. And we realized that there wasn't uh, a huge offer for uh, for affordable and high quality cloth diapers, uh, and that was like almost ten years ago now. So yeah, of course, twenty ten. Like, like I won't name them, but th- there were like like Chinese manufacturers who would who would sell on on Amazon and who would who would really like crowd <laughs> that really uh, cheap market. But that's not really what we wanted to do. We wanted to uh, uh, make sure that 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 the manufacturing process was going to be respected. That that everything that had to do with the diaper was going to be perfect. Therefore, offer that two year warranty. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so let's back up a bit. So we start this company, but but we source with like so many different suppliers. We, we had the chance of testing like every single product imaginable on our first born. So uh, he survived all of those tests. That's a good sign. Uh, and, and then basically we, we said, okay, what, what, what features do we really, really like? So I'm not going to pretend like we reinvented a diaper where we said, no, let's, let's start our own brand and, and let's only take the best of the best of, of, of everything from the fabric to the actual uh, mm-hmm. conception of the diapers themselves. Um, so we actually started on a Kijiji, which is a, like a version of, <laughs> Of, uh, Craigslist, right? Uh, yes. No brand, just saying we're a family. We have these. There was there was no brand on the diaper, uh, and then we. So, that's so like 20, 2010, 2012 of you. 
I know, I know. <laughs> so, uh, so, but, but our first order sold out in like, you know, a few weeks and we said, okay, let's scale, let's brand, let's, and then the website came. And then at first I remember we, we'd actually, our objective was to encourage people in low income families to be able to afford cloth diapering. Mm-hmm. So we'd actually bring my wife and I in all of the areas around our house um, in complexes or, or in uh, subsidized housing. Uh, we put posters, we, we put in mailboxes of flyers uh, to get people to save because we realized that you save like, well, you know, we almost mm-hmm. like $3,000. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a lot of, yeah. uh, a lot of savings. Anywho, so the, we started from there uh, and then it was in our house and then in our basement. And then uh, we have to, we had to move like four times within two years because it grew too fast. Uh, so, but, but it's okay. It's okay. Like those first, those first years were really fun. And now we have like a really solid team where we, you know, whatever I go, I'll go into the team. Later, yeah. But, well, it reminds but, me, your story reminds me of so much of listening to Muhammad at a uh, little helper as well of this kind of, uh, startup journey and growing faster and uh, yeah and we're from the education sector my wife and I so we were both working for uh, school districts uh, 10 years ago so my wife didn't go back after the first child because things were stepping up uh, we're, we're, we're growing and then a few years later uh, I said bye-bye to the <laughs> to, to my job and uh, and went all in and I don't regret it at all it's been um, a- where in Quebec are you guys located we're right uh, south shore of Montreal so uh, okay. I can see Montreal from this window. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how close we're. Yeah. Are you originally from Quebec? Yeah. Always? Yeah. Born and raised? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm one of those hybrid people. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was like, yeah. Because uh, you have I n- n- no Quebec accent to me. <laughs> no, I, I went to school in English. So uh, oh, okay. uh, it, there's that law in Quebec where, where you know, if your parents went in English school, they can send their kids to English school. Mm. So our children now go to English school, which is nice. It offers that possibility to uh, my sister to kids, lives out know? in Granby. Oh, yeah. Um, that's like, yeah. Close, yeah. close. Yeah. Very close. So I was, that's why I like nice. um, Do you live in a community that has? has um a cloth diaper rebate right now yeah the subsidies yeah yeah, yeah. We, there, there's a hundred dollars back on your order oh, a few okay. uh, on the south shore some people give up some municipalities give up to two hundred dollars uh for yeah, the yeah, purchase that's of what, a yeah. cloth diaper I just, kit like i know that that fluctuates depending on your region or your city or whatever yeah, i'm just, exactly. just kind of curious um i have chatted with a couple of quebec brands over the years and kind of interesting how that works um yeah. so you guys yeah, like super bootstrap. It feels like I I can't I can't even imagine selling a brand on Kijiji. Um, but <laughs> Try no it. brand on Kijiji. <laughs> like I, uh, we're very familiar with Kijiji out here on the West Coast as well, uh, yeah. over Craigslist or whatever. But yeah, so what what so you went into this process of designing a day a diaper and. I wanted to touch on a little bit of what Lindsay touches on in her blog post is yeah. a lot of people, I think there's a less stigma now around diapers made in China than there used to be, but we definitely went through a little period there where it was. Your diaper is different than a relabeled diaper. You guys have created and designed a special product um, and you have a really great working relationship is my understanding with your factory in China. Yeah, exactly. Can you talk we, a little yeah. bit about that? Absolutely. I'd love to. Uh, over the years, uh, you know, that sourcing part at first was was fun because you get to meet all sorts of people and <laughs> yes. but you're not meeting them they're they're like sending the stuff to you but then after that once we decided on, on our manufacturer we bought plane tickets and we were there uh so we actually developed the product with them uh okay. we were able to do like live uh choosing of the materials and the and the textile and the prints and everything you name it mm-hmm. uh we got to see everything every aspect of it from the financing aspect to how they treat their employees and and while we were there we had the chance to visit like about 10 other cloth diaper uh, factories because uh, we needed to see what was going on. And, and I'll tell you, they're, they're not all great. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to put any <laughs> bad press on China. Not at all. Like they're, they're mm-hmm. doing great things, but I can tell you that the manufacturer that we're dealing with, that we've been dealing with for many years now, uh, we have a really tight relationship. I think uh, my wife probably talks, she, she does the, the purchasing. She probably talks to her supplier more than she does to me. Well, that's, uh, I hear that story from, from every brand, from right. Marie at Petite Crown and and yeah. uh, Taya at Baby Boo and Muhammad at Little Helpers, like those relationships. I think as customers, we don't really see and understand, but you guys have you, these beautiful that we wouldn't even imagine. Like just uh, I, yeah. one re, one brand I talked to, they've they've hosted them back here in America, and like yeah. it's this back and forth relationship. 
Uh, it becomes this weird business friendship that is more personal than I think I could ever imagine. But, right? but that that's how business has to be. Yeah, like it's all I, based on people. It's all, yeah. it's, I mean, if you look at the people and one of the things we're the most proud of is having built this community uh, of not only manufacturers, but, but of people that are helping out that are working mm-hmm. for us that are, uh, you know, uh, for example, the, the person doing our Facebook ads right now, he's in the Philippines and he's <laughs> not in the Philippines because he's less paid or he's no, he's, he's a freelancer. He's actually getting more paid, uh, uh, better paid than a lot of my employees. It just happens that I found him on, on, a, a one of the platforms I use to find freelancers and we connected and we're, we're brothers. It's, it's really funny. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, so all that to say, you have to build this community and then that's how, uh, that's how we started at first. It was a family based business mm-hmm. and we've, we've kept those values all the way, all the way. And we've never, ever done any, taken any decision that would go against that. So you guys so, have grown quite a bit in the last year or two, I guess, with reaching out to the United States and the UK and. Yeah, um, US is really, really, it was last fall we, we okay. launched. So, so yeah, that's been good. And then UK, UK is great, but then Brexit happens. So then shipping oh. outside UK is really complicated. So we're actually going back out. Well, we're going to, we're going to have two separate warehouses uh, in Europe now. So uh, one to service Europe employ now a significant amount of people? Yeah, well, we have uh, our team right now in, in here in Longueuil, which is in Montreal. Uh, mm-hmm. Like we have our, our logistics coordinator, our uh, graphic designer, marketing director, uh, com- communication, service uh, clientele. Sorry, customer service. Yeah, the French came out there, uh, and then my wife and I. And then plus, there's there's uh, stagiaires, and there's always people around. Oh. We've outsourced fulfillment because. It was getting really, really hard to uh, to uh, tackle logistics on that level because the amount of orders and diapers per oh, month yeah. was just, it, it was seriously insane for Canada. So we said, okay, we need to outsource that. So we have, uh, <laughs> again, like they're like family. We talk to them every day, our warehouse. Uh, it's so cool. I mean, I, I just... Um embarrassingly have always kind of thought uh, LPO as being at small Quebec brand. Um, yeah. But you guys sound more like Bambino Mio or Todd's Bot scale, Bum Genius scale. Like you guys are doing big things, bigger things well, than I thought. Yeah. The awesome. Actually, uh, four orders out of 10 in Canada actually leave our province. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so BC is like super strong, uh, you know, whatever, uh, out West, out East, it's, it's now coast to coast. So surprisingly, a French brand is, uh, is really well appreciated and, and we're glad to, <laughs> to have, you know, to be building yeah. this community. Uh, um, so it's fun. It is fun. Okay. So the other kind of thing, so as an international influencer, I guess, but most of my audience is in the United States. Uh, so oh, we're going to yeah. ask this like awkward, touchy about yes. the no, 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 and the gussets. People want to know, <laughs> why can't we get the gusset in the United States? Does that impact the yeah. quality of the performance <clears throat> of the diaper? Should they be concerned? Yeah. All great questions, uh, and we do get on a daily basis. Oh saying, yes, we get we get that question saying, "Hey, I realize that there's a difference in there." Uh, so, so of course, the, the the patent issue with with the double gusset that's okay. We 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 only launched now in the U.S. Uh, because we we decided to stick to Canada. Uh, it was a big enough market for us, but the demand was so strong in the U.S. We get emails like every day saying, "Three hundred million I buy? people, like yeah, the yeah. population so like, is massive." Exactly. So, so of course, we have to redesign the diaper for the U.S. market. We had to remove the double gusset, which is fine. Uh, does it does it change anything from the quality of, of the diaper? No. What I what I find the biggest feature of our diaper is actually that it's a sleeve, right? It's a double opening pocket. Mm, yes. And I know that sounds that sounds like oh, okay, that's that's cool, but not not that much. Oh no, it makes a huge world of difference. One, when you're a dad like me and you have big hands and you're putting the inserts in there, <laughs> your hands fit in super easily, and then you, yeah. <laughs> and then the inserts just leave by themselves in the wash. So it's more like a sleeve pot than a pocket, right? Because a pocket well would, would, would be closed on one side. Uh, and that that is the key feature that makes our diaper really easy to use. We also chose to use a gray sweet cloth uh, inside mm-hmm. the USA diapers uh, just to avoid that stain. And the sweet cloth is handpicked by us when we were in China. Uh, we had the chances to see a different, uh, a, a few different types, and our supplier knows not to share that secret with anybody else. Yeah, um, I was really impressed with the quality of that gray suede. Um, yeah, is that unique then on your U.S. diaper? So 
So if a it's, Canadian, it, they don't get the it's gray. It's the same. No, no, it's the same sweet cloth. It's just a, it's just a gray sweet cloth. Uh, meaning we if we had to keep that that that, that uh, the same uh, quality of sweet cloth mm-hmm. in both markets. Okay. Uh, but we thought that that the gray would would be best for uh, for this new market. Just figuring this out. I love the look, the feel of it. But our Canadian brand is so branded now with that white sweet cloth. It would be really hard to switch. So well, it maybe eventually we'll we'll make the switch. Well, I've seen anyway. it. It's been um from my perspective, I've been a bit of a trend this year is this kind of switch to a colored suede or a colored yeah. athletic wicking jersey or a colored fleece and a lot of yeah. what i'm hearing from brands is that's like consumer fear of stains which is exactly. super cosmetic but uh but still, it, i guess it, if it's that little thing that convinces like decades of detergent marketing has told us that stains are evil even though they're not so i mean yeah. if that's if that's what's going to help that's what's going to yeah. help. So uh, to reassure our your clients from or your followers from uh, from the US, it's a great diaper. It's still mm-hmm. warrantied the same. It's, it's going to be worn the same by the baby. It's going to feel the same. Uh, so that that double gusset is something that we put in there because of the testing that we did with our kids. But if you look at, for example, Mama Loops Den, she's saying, no, no, no. I actually prefer the diaper without the double gussets, right? So, <laughs> I mean, everybody has a different opinion on that. And and in order to respect the laws, we that that, that was the like a no-brainer for us and yeah. uh, and so far we're getting great feedback on the diaper itself yeah uh it's a, a great shape and um it's a great yeah it's a great shape diaper like and i love what you say about sleep so as somebody who does a lot of like chatting with parents i'm gonna have to um start using this word sleeve more instead of pocket because you're right i think about i have um i have a different brand here in front of me but it's also got that this is this is more sleevey than pockety yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, that, and it's nice, uh, to, you know, yeah. it, it's already, you're already adding to your routine, so you might as well make it as easy as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and now that, that really, that's, yeah. uh, I was the stay-at-home dad for the, my, both my boys. Uh, <laughs> so I changed a lot of diapers and definitely that that weighed in in that to, to how we thought our diapers were for, for, <laughs> for families. Well, that, like, that's super cool to see and hear a story from another cloth diaper dad. It's such, unfortunately, such a minority in this space. Um, yeah. No, but, and when, when you figure out like the liners, right, the bamboo biodegradable liners, some people use washable liners and that's fine. But for me, like, like uh, I won't speak for all dads, I'll speak for me as a dad, uh, definitely between the sleeve and the liner, like there's there's <laughs> nothing left to cloth I bring other than starting your washing machine, right? Yeah. <laughs> what you're already you know? doing because you have so much laundry with kids. Yeah, no, 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 it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> So uh, no 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 it's it's nice it's nice it's easy and we're we're so happy we have we have like I, I can't tell you numbers because I never know who's listening to this <laughs> but but like we're talking about like just last year uh, or in the last twelve months right before the podcast I I, I just ch- checked uh, the sales and 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 the environmental impact but we're actually between fifteen and twenty million diapers that wow. did not go to landfill last year that's um, amazing so just to give you an idea like we've built a community of people that have yeah. chosen to take this route. It's easy. It's doable. Completely feasible for any family. It's affordable, and mm-hmm. obviously, land. Could you imagine, like, just picture that many soiled uh, uh, disposable <laughs> diapers? That would be like I don't know how many containers. That would be ridiculous. Yes. Anywho, yeah. Yeah. Like crazy. that is crazy, crazy, crazy. that's incredible. Um, and to see so much, so much like excitement is just awesome. So, what? I mean, maybe you just answered this question. What are you most proud of in your story of launching a brand over the last nine years? Uh, most proud of. Hmm. That's a, that's a, you know what? I think, I think that, yeah, no, I, I miss the times when we could do baby shows and actually, mm-hmm. you know, talk to people because we're all online. Right. So of course there's, we could do like Facebook lives and that boring stuff. I, I hate <laughs> doing that. Uh, but, but in talking to people and people come up to, to us and say, you know, what? we met you last year at this show and, and we decided to give it a try. We were completely close to the idea. We gave it a try. And now we realize how could we have waited so long? Right. And, and that story repeats itself like on a daily basis. Uh, so r- really it's, it's making cloth diaper mainstream uh, that, that for us anyway, in our community. And when I say our community now, it's like international community mm-hmm. uh, that, that just, it makes a lot of sense, you know? So, uh, so we coming from our background, like the education background, uh, like I was a special care counselor and then a academic advisor. And but I was always <laughs> into a bunch of projects. Right. But yeah. I wouldn't have thought I'd be selling cloth diapers. <laughs> um, 
but like I fell in love with this world like years ago and yeah, yeah we're, we're not going to stop. So I think that building this community and making it mainstream is, is definitely something that we're yeah. proud of. And well, we've seen like you're just your international expansion here has been such a great step moving forward and bringing that affordable price um, to the United States, to everywhere. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, been- we're, we're, we're happy. Just the U.S. is a different market uh, for us. Just, just learning how people shop, what they expect, what they, and we're getting like daily messages saying, when are new prints coming out? Oh, they're coming out. We have some coming out this week, actually. Uh, but but we see that excitement that's there and, and we're trying to nurture that and work with that and and understand like the different zones also. Like it's, it's such a, you know, we have, there's a big traction from California, from Texas, from New York. But I mean, for us, USA is still pretty new. Other than going to Wildwood during the summer for our holidays, uh, we're, we're learning a lot about, about moms and dads from the U.S. right now. And it's it's um, a lot of fun. It's a you're lot. the first brand of many. I've talked to many brands who've kind of alluded to different um, personalities across the United States and their shopping habits that I feel like I'm going to have to explore one day on my own. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. No, interesting. And I'm starting to think about how I see that in my own business as I've got a book that I sell and I have uh, merch that I sell and now. Oh, okay. You know what? I actually haven't paid attention to that. Uh, you guys are savvy in paying attention to that. So what oh, I'm going to ask this, this one of these last questions, which is what can <laughs> we expect to see from LPO this year in 2021? Like, so if this podcast is coming out in July, <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, okay, well, well. by the time this comes out, I presume the news will be out, so it's not going to be a, a huge secret <laughs> we'll that, I, sure that my wife will say, why did you say this on national television? <laughs> yeah, I know it's just a podcast, but still, it's a great podcast. Uh, okay, we are actually bringing, uh, stepping up a notch in creating eco-friendly diapers, mm-hmm. and uh, we're, we're starting a new collection of diapers uh, where the fabric is coming from recycled plastic. So each diaper is actually the equivalent of two recycled plastic bottles. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we're going to be uh, focusing a lot on that. Hopefully, maybe one day only offering that to our clients. Uh, we've ran the tests. The tests have been phenomenal. So we're just going to run with it. Uh, the prints are going to be beautiful. And of course, the, the, the packaging is going to change a bit. And we, we also want to uh, sponsor an international organization that takes care of the environment. I will tell you at a later date what that's <laughs> we'll going make to sure be. We've got that. So we're going to make sure we follow LPO and you guys yeah. have multiple channels, right? You've got different ones for each of your audiences. Exactly. Of course, of course, our home base is Canada. So, so our, our first, our first batch uh, is going to Canada, uh, but, but it's already, it's already ordered to, for the U S mm-hmm. uh, and the UK as well. So, uh, so by the fall uh, in all markets, we should have that, that new uh, collection. I've, um, you'll, so you'll be one of, you'll be the first, as far as I know, in Canada, bringing a recycled plastic bottle, PUL to market, but we've also seen it. I think TOTS has it, Assembly has it, and uh, somebody else. But my understanding is that the plastic is spun into a fiber that's spun into the textile, but the textile still needs to be coated. It's yeah, it's still it's still a, it's still the pull. It's still it's the it's the manufacturing process of polyester. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in this case, yeah, part of the, the the plastic beads that are made from the plastic itself will be transformed into into the fabric itself yeah so i don't so know if that's awesome clear and i'm not gonna lie not... i'm not i'm not a specialist on that <laughs> so don't quote me oh, on it well i'm uh, always I'm trying at... to pick everybody's yeah. brain that i get on the show about it because i'm trying to make sure that i understand it properly um yeah that's my extent is but, made uh... from oil to begin with so we're, we're kind of like we're reducing that step we're just we're we're taking something that's already been made into a plastic and spinning it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. hopefully it's, it's reducing kind of a cool, plastic. I never know who knows more. So you never know. Yeah. Maybe you were a specialist <laughs> on it. You seem to know a lot of no. interesting but things. By, so. by, the t- by the time our, our, it actually hits the ground, which is like in a bit less than two months, uh, the, the whole team is going to be briefed on exactly what the answer uh, <laughs> what who and where is. and when. Yeah, exactly. Because that's going to be coming out for sure. So, oh, it's really it's cool. Fun. 
but you have to like, like uh, as a business owner and just the, like as a person, you have to adapt, you have to change. And that's, that's what just makes you, you know, stay vibrant and stay alive. Yeah. So our company is always trying to, to, you know, figure new stuff out. Le- le- you have no idea. Well, of course you do, but we learn like every day it's ridiculous and, and, and we're yeah. learning at a really fast pace. So, uh, so yeah. this, this is just one of one example of that. And right? uh, this, um, these re- recycled plastic fibers, is is I definitely seeing the uptick of it, and it's really exciting to hear of another brand yeah. bringing it on and learning more about it as an option for us because the textile industry is just is so challenging as it is environmentally. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly, exactly. There's already a, at least you know cloth diapers had already had that eco-friendly you know crino in French uh, um, vibe or or, or impact. Uh, and again, this is just just speaking an even more uh, an even bigger difference uh, mm-hmm. in competing against disposables at this point. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add? We've been chatting for about half an hour. Anything else oh, about geez, your brand? Oh, really? Hey, I speak, I talk too much. You just tell me to stop talking. And say, well, well, you're a fast talker. So- <laughs> So yeah. that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. I, it just uh, shares so much of your passion. It's so exciting. One of my favorite things about doing this podcast is is getting to talk to brands like he talks about at baby shows. And so it's pretty awesome, especially in the era of a pandemic, to talk to another adult today. Um, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. And to kind of hear your story. There's so much passion here um, with why am I, my sister lives in Quebec and I have been there now four times and I am going to stumble over it again. La, P- La Petite Ours? Yes. Oh, you can say LPO, by the way. Everybody LPO. says LPO. Even in Quebec, when people are write it out, like on Facebook, oh, they well, just yeah. say... Oh, well, yeah, why would we... We... People don't even... People don't write out anything. We, no. it's, you know, it's BG, it's PC, it's yeah. TV, it's... Yeah. It's, no. it's be, definitely become LPO. So I forgot to mention that at, at the first, at the starting uh, the, the interview, but... What is... But, you know, what is ours? Or say ours, it's a it's baby bear basically. It's a ours oh. is a bear. So it's also the little dipper constellation. Uh, so uh, it was it was kind of born out of both those worlds. But lapid stools is a baby bear. Um, I, so I just think of it as LPO all the time. LPO, LPO. Yeah. I don't even. I didn't even think if to you ask at, you. And I always ask brands about their name, story, yeah. origins. <laughs> and if I you look at this uh, at the brand at the lapid stools itself, the O is actually a baby bear. It's actually a bear. Uh, you, you'll you'll see well, it. Well, and that's why that's why that word looks so familiar because I've probably yeah. heard of yeah. Little Dipper Bear. But I, I only know cereal box French as a West Coaster. <laughs> there we don't really go. talk about bears on the back of the cereal box much. No, exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> well, and it's cool to hear you're on the south side of Montreal. I'll have to uh, send you an email next time I'm in Granby. Whenever For sure. Yeah, we're end. about uh, 40 minutes uh, away from Granby. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, well, you have to fly into Montreal to get to my sister anyways. Uh, there you go. I usually spend most of the time out there. Um, well, it was awesome to chat with you, David. Thank you for sharing a glimpse into your story. I know that there are so many more amazing news articles. You guys have been covered so many different ways on the internet. Um, yeah, not but- even like most of it just organically, just people saying, hey, like they're going out on YouTube and mm-hmm. writing blogs. I find that really fantastic. I, I love yeah. seeing that. And like our exposure, especially outside Quebec, that's, that's what we, we like to see now. But, but, but in retail stores, we're, we're in more and more retail stores across Canada. Nova Scotia this morning reached out a retailer saying, hey, you know, I want your products. But it's like a daily thing now. So it's, it's really, really fun. Awesome. Do you is, have uh, retailers in the United States right now? Or are you directly? We have two online stores, uh, Southern US. Uh, okay. One sells mostly in Mexico. <laughs> oh. So, uh, which is pretty cool. That's uh, actually a so. big market that I've been, I need to explore more. A lot of people are, are, are telling us that not to be surprised if uh, a lot of our sales go to the go to Mexico. So, my uh, uh, I, my assistant is from Argentina, so she helps me with a lot of uh, Latin America. There's a gr- growing cloth diaper market internationally. It's just you know, blown away. We yeah. were looking at the uh, stats for uh, the global uh, the international diaper change, like that that event that happens there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know what I'm talking yeah, about, but yeah, uh, I, it was Karen a few weeks ago, right? Show a couple of times. I hosted okay, it. Perfect. Yeah, I, and you should see the traction it gets in Mexico. It's huge, and 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 across Latin America, Mexico, it's India, Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. It's just the international market is blowing up. Uh, and it's so yeah. cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. Uh, no, it's well, good. Thank We're you. having a lot of fun anyway. It sounds like you're. All right. That was the last and final guest 
if you've made it this far, just because I'm the type of person who bows out as soon as the guest stops speaking, I'm going to remind you that you should sign up for the Cloth Diaper Podcast email newsletter so that you know when the next podcast releases, as well as other fun giveaways and thingamabobs. As well, if you've been thinking about being a guest on the Cloth Ever podcast, uh, right now I'm in a little bit of a hiatus overwhelm. So check back in with me in a couple months because 2021 is full of the brim. I just need to sit down and edit the shows. We'll also be doing a re newing of the introduction so my most popular podcast right now are like some of my really early podcast episodes and i'm super embarrassed by them and so much i've learned over the last couple of years that i love to do a whole new intro to cloth 101 series anyways we will see you on the internet bye